Gen X has a lot of people concerned. In North Carolina, around Cape Fear, and in the Netherlands, near Rotterdam, in Dordrecht, people are concerned about finding substances associated with Gen X in their drinking water. Because Gen X itself is not a substance. What we're talking about are compounds labeled FRD902 and FRD903. We will be talking about the toxicology of those substances, the chemistry, and put things in perspective. So, watch and learn. Fluoropolymers are found in many places. Materials like Teflon, Kalef, Tefzel are known for being very resistant to chemical attack and they can withstand high temperatures, making them essential in certain technical applications where they cannot be replaced. For instance, certain types of gas analysis needed for environmental research would not be able to be done without these materials. In other applications, they are a mere convenience, like anti-stick cookware or raincoats that do not get wet but that do breathe, or stain repellent textiles and carpets. Producing these products requires toxic chemicals like PFOA, PFOS and more recently the chemicals of Gen X. Um, some of these toxic chemicals will inevitably end up in the air, the soil, the water and the final product. What this means is what we're going to look at. I found one scientific article, you see it here. If you click on the names of the researchers, you find that they work for the producer. They found that Gen X chemicals are toxic, but not a lot. Read it for yourself. At the EPA side I found nothing. The Dutch RIVM is more forthcoming with information. It compares it with PFOA and considers Gen X chemicals toxic and suspects it could cause cancer. So let's look there. Chemistry. We will start with soap. Here's a formula of a type of fatty acid which you could use as candle fat. The H indicates a hydrogen atom and we don't have to show all of these. All the hook points and end points in the chain are carbon, which can only be connected at four points. It has to be. If you like, it has four legs and they all need to be connected. What is missing has to be hydrogen. Here are more fatty acids on the top. The acid groups are on the left and these can react with a strong alkali, like sodium hydroxide. This produces soap. You see that at the bottom. Soap has the interesting property that on one side it likes to be in water, on the other side it likes to be in fat. So it has a polar head and an apolar tail. Here you see the soap molecules depicted like needles dissolved in water. Their tails would penetrate a little fat droplet with the head sticking outside. This allows the fat to be removed with the water. This is how you clean yourself. Fluoropolymers like Teflon are produced in a reaction that takes place in a type of latex. Emulsion polymerization. This is basically an emulsion of little droplets which are filled with Teflon like material. Like Teflon, it repels many substances, so we need a type of soap or surfactant that is not rejected. So it is my guess that that is why Gen X chemicals are used. On the left, we see regular soap. On the right, we see these special surfactants. On the top, a soap made of PFOA, and on the bottom, a Gen X soap. Here's PFOA, the acid. These are all the same molecule. Here's the Gen X acid, drawn in different manners. They're all equal. Just take a look at it. The official name is 
2-tetrafluoro-2-heptafluoropropoxy propanoic acid or, if you like, perfluor 2 methyl 3 oxahexanoic acid. This perfluor means that everywhere where otherwise you would find hydrogen has now been taken by fluor, fluor atoms. Believe me, I have to write this down before I know what I'm talking about myself. For comparison, here you see the differences pointed out between the soap of PFOA and Gen X. The green arrow shows that Gen X is made with ammonia, not with sodium. The blue arrow points to a little branch. The red arrow points to an oxygen atom or an ether bond. The tail of the soap is a little shorter and the differences are not large, so Gen X can be compared with PFOA. Finally, I'm showing you PFOS and its sodium salt. This is another surfactant that does not belong in nature. PFOA, of course we can take a look at Wikipedia and right away we find a lot of information. Keep in mind that this medium is often manipulated by PR companies and people with a dog in the race. So I like to take a look at Green Med Info to find scientific literature. And right away we see that PFOA is toxic to blood, liver and semen. Zeolites and vitamin C are protective. Textiles prove to be a major source of exposure. So remember that when you're buying a raincoat. Science Daily shows us even more. It's called an endocrine disruptor, a hormone-mimicking compound, and a lot of these are, are troublemakers. We read about these issues, cardiovascular, birth weight, obesity, diabetes, osteoarthritis, and thyroid problems. And, no surprise, China is a major pollutant. In a number of applications, fluoropolymers play an essential role and cannot be replaced. In other applications, they are just a mere convenience. Producing these products requires toxic chemicals that are both toxic to ourselves and to nature. Substances like PFOA and the chemicals in Gen X. As Gen X is fairly new and unknown, but the chemicals are comparable to PFOA, it is safe to say that they are both toxic endocrine disruptors that may lead to cancer. Pro-inflammatory, if you like. And as it goes with such substances, measures can be taken to minimize their effect, such as the taking of copious amounts of vitamin C and zeolites. And anyone who makes his pancakes in anti-stick cookware is voluntarily exposing himself to the same chemicals and likely even more than you would get from the drinking water. So keep things in perspective. As always, don't believe a word you hear. Find and read the information for yourself and draw your own conclusions. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more.